Oh, what about a tuba? Yeah, a tuba. Oh, that's good. 98. A herd of wildebeests. Okay, yeah, I can definitely see that happening. Um, what are we at now? Oh yeah, 99. What about Stephen Hawking on his lowest wheelchair speed? Catch me if you can, mother You think that can happen? I think so, I could see that. 100. Um... Oh, a Trojan horse with a full complement of Greek soldiers inside. There we go. A hundred things that can get past Carey Price. That wasn't so hard. No, it's pretty easy. Oh, it's press box chatter in 10 minutes or less. Oh, it's press box chatter with Rhino and the Birdman. The biggest stories from the NHL this week. The Buffalo Sabres can't catch a break. First, they're the Buffalo Sabres. Then, they get shut out two games in a row. And now, Jack Eichel and coach Ralph Kruger just can't figure out what day Eichel got hurt. Kruger said it was Tuesday and then Thursday. And Eichel was basically like, uh, no boss man, it was Tuesday and that carried into Thursday. Needless to say, the Sabres have quickly turned into the worst franchise in the NHL. The only people who could save them at this point are Jason Pominville, Thomas Vanek, and Ryan Miller, who is somehow still playing in the NHL. You can't get rid of me, b****! Last Wednesday, the Montreal Canadiens fired head coach Claude Julien and assistant head coach Kirk Muller. Instead of hiring Cole Caulfield, like we said, the Habs gave assistant coach Dominic Ducharme the interim tag for the rest of the season. A nervous Mark Bergevin, who quickly went from GM of the year to most likely to get fired, explained Ducharme is the perfect coach for today's game. He mentioned Ducharme's coaching style is much more suited to the young and fast players of today's NHL. I actually heard that he's great at coddling players in his arms on off days, changing their diapers between periods. And you played the second period with that in your pants. And singing them lullabies on the flight back home. Fans watching the Los Angeles-Minnesota game on Saturday night might have thought they were having an acid flashback when both teams wore their reverse retro jerseys. The Kings were clad in old school royal purple that harkened back to their 1967 origins, while the wild splashy green and yellow trim was, well, wild. The uniforms were so retro that the XL Energy Center reunited the surviving artists from Woodstock to perform the national anthem and brought in Austin Powers for the ceremonial opening face-off. Yeah, baby! <laughs> These interviews I made up None of this happened because they're just made up Such a pleasure to be joined by the Kachuk Bros today. Maddie. let's start with you. You're set to play Brady five times in the next two weeks. What's that going to be like for you? These next two weeks will be pretty stressful. Uh, crack open a couple bottles of wine here. Let's move to you now, Brady. You've really solidified yourself as a solid winger in the NHL this season, much like your brother Matthew. Just wondering, if you guys could give us your opinion on who you think is better. Now, Matthew being the older brother, so much bigger than me growing up, he beat me up every single day and, and uh, beat me in every competition. So, you know, just as we were growing up, he's just so much better than me. He's bigger, stronger, faster, and I got used to getting my butt kicked. Well, uh, you really praised Matthew over there. Uh... Uh, lastly here, just wondering if you guys ever plan on dropping the mittens in game action this season. We're competitors on the ice. It's, you know, it can be brothers after and before, but when we get on the ice, we both want to win, so. And what do you think, Matthew? Yeah, anybody that thinks we're going to fight is an idiot. Hey, I'm not stupid. My mom just told me I'm not as smart as everyone else. And I only got held back three grades, not two. Hi, Jordan, or Mr. Bennington, whatever you prefer. Um, it's been a tough start to the season for you, no doubt, but hey, that's fine. Hey, that's fully okay. On Saturday night, coach gave you the hook, and then you went after three different Sharks players. I was just wondering where your frustration level's at right now. I'm chilling, because I'm getting paid no matter what. Oh, that's lovely. That's just exquisite. What was going through your head when you were going after those guys? Don't drafts just spit? Well, they've got big tongues. Mysterious people don't cry. Don't they say that dogs have cleaner mouths than humans? If you're looking at the color orange, your brain will attract the scent of an orange. I don't get it, Sam. Every week we interview these amazing guests, and the conversations, 
They just always go sideways. We're trying our best, man. I guess we just gotta keep at it. Maybe our questions suck. Yeah. Or, uh, I don't know. I don't know, maybe, uh, maybe everyone just hates us too. But, can you really blame them? I guess not, I mean, with a co-host like you, honestly, I, I think you're probably the problem. Oh yeah? You think I'm the problem? Well, uh, maybe we should just call it quits right now and go our separate ways. Fine by me, I hate you anyways. Fine. Good luck. Oh, it's press box chatter in 10 minutes. Wait, no, 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 stop, stop, stop. I'm back, okay? It's just a joke. That's what I thought. We couldn't end it before the top five performers of the week. Coward. Yes, I'm heard too much good content here, man. So, who are your top five performers of the week? Um, McDavid, 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 and- Le No, 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 let me guess, let me guess. Connor McDavid. Um, no, actually, Ryan Miller. 298 goals against average, an 898 save percentage, still better than Pricer. Hey, you know what? You got a point there, my friend. Achoo! Bless you. Since returning from Mount Doom in Mordor, Frodo Bag- I'm sorry, I'm sorry. What? Oh, my bad. <clears throat> Since returning from Mount Doom in Mordor, Matt Zuccarello has been an absolute powerhouse for- Minnesota! And he's the main reason they've been able to surge up the West Division standings. He has 11 points in just 7 games this season, reminding us he can do more than just carry and destroy the one ring that was created by Dark Lord Sauron. I never watched Star Wars, man, so I don't really know what you're talking about. I've honestly got to give some credit to the Chicago Blackhawks. I thought they would be at the bottom of the barrel without Taves, Doc, a true number one goalie, and considering their name sounds a little bit too much like Black But lucky for them, many players have stepped up, but none more than Patrick Kane, who is reminding the league that his best days are still ahead of him. He has 11 goals and 23 assists through just 23 games this year. If he manages to stay healthy and avoid the taxi driver of the taxi squad, the Blackhawks should be a lock for at least a first round exit. Andre Vasilevsky has been a brick wall for the Lightning this year. The 26-year-old Russian netminder has a 942 save percentage, a goals against average of 165, and just recorded his third shutout in as many games. At this point, his chances of winning the Vesna are better than your single theater teacher's chances of marrying the woman he met in the parking lot at Chili's. Hey, big boss, do you have any Pepto-Bismol? I think I had a bad batch of calamari. You're the woman of my f dreams. Let's go do it in my Prius behind the dumpster. He might look like a serial killer, but that hasn't stopped Mike Smith from dabbling in burglary for the Edmonton Oilers. If we exclude Saturday's game where he let in four goals, for the sake of our story, he's been a stud between the pipes. He's gone six and one since returning from injury, and he's made some vintage Mike Smith style saves. Carter McDavid actually praised the veteran goaltender for his leadership in the locker room and his strangely impressive knife skills at team dinner. We're having fresh liver and spleen tonight, gentlemen. Our last pick for performer of the week is New Jersey Devils Pavel Zaka. The 23-year-old Czech is finally living up to the hype after being drafted 6 overall in 2015. Sometimes it pays to be patient with your prospects. <coughs> Every Canadian team found me ever. If he can continue to make a name for himself in this league, he'll join the devil himself, Thanos, and the doctor that killed Michael Jackson as the greatest devils of all time. Episode 8 of Press Box Chatter in the books. It feels like only eight weeks ago we started this show, eh, Ryan? Doesn't time fly? Sure does, Summer, and that's because it was eight weeks ago. But uh, let's wrap up the show by looking at how we did in last week's betting corner. Gretzky comes back to net 20. Uh, nope. Hall scores in at least one of last weekend's games. Uh, nope. Okay, those weren't so great. What about that parlay that we had? Oh yeah, let me check my papers. So Zegers didn't score, and the Sharks lost 7-6 against the Blues. But hey, the Hurricanes won! We got that right! Let's go! I knew we could do it! I never doubted them for Sam a Sam and Ryan are the best! I love them! And I'm Tim Stutzel. I invested my whole rookie contract in that bet. Now I has nowhere to live, so I sleep in Brady Kachuk's bathtub every night. Oh, it's press box chatter in ten minutes or less. 